And I would like to welcome everybody today here. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, let me say, glad uh, to, to open up uh, this ceremony today, which is an award ceremony. So we have a webinar, which is an award webinar. And that's great because uh, we will hear, uh, let me say, the top uh, chosen uh, images uh, or photos uh, that has been chosen, let me say, by, uh, by evaluation committee. And I'm also very happy to announce that we have also one mini project uh, that has been chosen and will be also presented today here. Um, so my name is Arena Heinzig. Um, I'm the chair of REACT. Uh, which is um, an IEEE GRS technical committee. It's a quite new committee. So we are since around, let me say, one year operating, but the uh, official committee, we are just since one month. So I'm very happy uh, to be today here. And uh, some of my colleagues, which are leading with me together, uh, these technical committee uh, are also connected. Uh, I see Rio Nat Natusaki, he's here, and Adi Patiharia, he's also connected, uh, as well as also Adnan Siddiq. So I'm very happy uh, to have them already here with me. I'm sharing today this session with Ferus uh, Stamboli. Ferus, do you like to present yourself shortly? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our webinar. So my name is Fairuz. I'm the chair of the Young Professionals within GRSS. Now we'll present to you later the Earth at Risk Image Contest winners. Mm -hmm. So back to you, Elena. Yeah, thanks. Probably you just start then the ceremony. So just uh, click to the next slide. Yes, as it said, so we have two parts today. So I start with a part about the mini project. Uh, this is a, a competition that we have started the first time this year. Uh, it is a competition. If you click to the next slide, please. <laughs> it is a competition with the main goal uh, to uh, provide an overview of or present, let me say, a proposal of a small project a small science project related to remote sensing. Uh, the main idea behind was to motivate local students to work scientifically together in a specific area and make aware of particular regional problems uh, that are related to SDGs, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, or even to climate change issues. REACT is, uh, stands actually for Remote Sensing, Environment, Analysis, and Climate Technology, so that's abbreviation. And in, within REACT, we have four main local focus areas. Uh, the one is dealing with issues related to Pacific Islands. Uh, the other one is agriculture and food security in India. Another one is flood and water security in Africa. And we have a new topic, which is uh, dealing with the Hindu Kush Karakuram Himalaya in their cryospheric um, issues that they have um, over these regions. So as said, the main idea about our first um, yeah, open competition was uh, to propose or to send to us some small scientific projects uh, which are dealing with one of these topics, could be also one topic which is not completely dealt in one of this focal area, but it should somehow uh, um, be in connection to remote sensing, but also or using remote sensing to, to solve or to have some solutions or development of algorithm for solutions in any kind of related uh, climate issues or, as it said, uh, kind of uh, sustainable development goals. The main outcome of this competition is at the end uh, a publication of the women of the winning team that we will have or we have already and the IEEE uh, um, the publication in the IEEE jersey and magazine and also a small financial support uh, for this team if we click now to the next one so we could already announce the winner of this uh, competition this time so the winner or the winning team is from uh, the Remote Sensing and Spatial Analy uh, Analytics uh, Lab from Information Technology University in Lahore, uh, which is in Pakistan. 
And the winning team is Abdul Bazil, Estaham Nasser, and Nida Kayum. And uh, they have won, they won their, the first prize and also the only prize uh, with a topic deep learning for mapping glacial lakes in Hindu Kush and Himalayas using Sentinel-2 multispectral data. And I would like to really very much congratulate this team uh, for their uh, very interesting and, and very, let me say, forward coming work. So the, you see already the topic is related to one of, the, of our focal area and is in principle really trying to map glacial lakes, which is which are one of the main indicator for climate warming. So from this point of view, it is a very important work to understand better what is ongoing and monitor uh, the changes over these Himalayan areas. So again, thanks a lot and congratulations to this winning team. Probably just short some sentences. So this year we didn't have so many applications. Uh, it is clear um, because it was the first time and probably it was also not very clear what exactly is expected. But however, we would like to continue on this uh, mini project competition and we will announce it again also for next year. So if somebody is interested, uh, you are welcome to join or to propose again a mini project uh, for the uh, for the next competition. So we will have the announcement in May, and uh, the deadline uh, for the submission will be again in September, and then in October we will give uh, uh, the announcement to the winning team. So therefore, today we have only one winning team. Uh, we had only a very small selected number of uh, proposals, and this was the best one that has been uh, chosen or selected in terms of evo uh, evaluated uh, through three different ev uh, evaluating uh, persons. And, um, and therefore, I'm very happy uh, to announce um, that this uh, winning team uh, was the best choice. Probably, uh, I'm very happy if Abdul Bazir can now open up his screen and present us today uh, the main, um, yeah, the, the main basics about or the the issue, the background about this project. So I'm very happy uh, to hear uh, what this project is about, and probably also everybody else. Abdul, can you please open up your screen and also share the screen with your presentation? Uh, yeah, sure. Give me two minutes. Yes. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, it works very well. Thanks. And also your voice is very good. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank IEEE, IEEE GRSS React for awarding our project title Deep Learning for Mapping Glacial Lakes in Hindu Kush and Himalayas using multi Sentinel-2 multispectral data. Uh, I am Abdul Basit. I'm working as research associate at Remote Sensing and Spatial Analytics Lab at Information Technology University, Lahore, Pakistan. Uh, my team members are Itsham Nasir and Nida Kayum. Uh, I think the team members would like to introduce themselves. So I would uh, request Nida to introduce herself first, and then we can move to Sham. So. Uh, Nida, can you hear me? You're muted. Sorry, yes, I was just saying that Nida has her microphone open, but uh, we can't hear her. Probably there's a problem with the microphone, could be. <laughs> so, should we proceed with the next one? Probably Isham we just start as well. Yeah, very good. Yeah, is for me. Is he here? I'm just checking. Yes, he's also here. He's still muted. 
yeah uh, thanks a lot arena uh, and itripali for inviting us to present our work over here uh, i am at the sham desir and currently i am uh, a phd student at remote sensing and spatial analytics lab and uh, currently my research area is uh, glacial lake monitoring uh, in northern areas of pakistan mm -hmm. thanks Great, over to yes. you abdul basir Yes, thanks. Probably we try again, Nida, if she can at least open her her video, <laughs> then she, we can at least say hello. <laughs> if it's possible, I don't know. Uh, Nida, we cannot hear you. I think. But can we see her? Also not, right? Oh, yes, you can hear, see her. Yeah, perfect. Great. Yeah, sorry, we can't hear you. But um, yeah, at least we, we can say hello like this to you. <laughs> what, what is probably good if you could uh, just reconnect, just go out and try to reconnect and, um, and Abdul can already start and probably at the end of the presentation, you can say again, hello, if it works. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. So are we good to go? Yes, please. So uh, I'll start from uh, I'll start by sharing some details about our study area and some past growth events in this region. Uh, also, the region relevance to UN SDGs, uh, then our proposed methodology and results and discussion. So basically, our focus area is northern Pakistan. As we all know, northern Pakistan covers multiple mountain ranges such as Hindu Kush, Karakoram, Himalayas. Uh, it hosts more than 5,000 glaciers, and according to a recent inventory, glacial lake inventory of ICI mode. 2,500 new lakes have been found. Among these 52 are potentially dangerous with a tendency to cause blow-off events. So it makes it interesting to monitor only those lakes that are marked as potentially dangerous. Uh, currently, we are working on a particular glacier that is Dhokpal Glacier. It is located in Golan Gol Valley in Chitral. Uh, uh, the red marker shows the location of the uh, Dhokpal glacier and the picture shows the, uh, it's basically the actual picture of the glacier. Uh, it was taken back in May when we uh, when we were on a field trip to uh, Golan Gol Valley, Chitral. So this valley, uh, this valley contains more than 53 gla glaciers with uh, with different, with ranging from 39, 117 to 61, 40, 43 meters above sea level. So there is an important infrastructure in this valley, which is a 108 megawatt gold and gold hydropower plant. So basically these 53 glaciers are a source of water for the operation of this hydropower plant. Uh, a quick overview of the past glow events. Uh, so in 2019, a glacial lake was formed on this particular glacier located in Golan Gold Valley. It caused a, uh, eventually it burst and caused a glow event on July 7, 2019. It caused a reported damage to three houses, three shops, five bridges, and most importantly, the Golan Gold hydropower plant. In 2020, again, uh, the, a, another lake was formed on the same glacier and it also caused a glow of event on July 13, 2020. It was a reported damage to 18 houses, one mask, and several standing crops. So our basically our project has direct relevance to UNSTG 13 as, as Pakistan ranks eighth among most vulnerable countries due to climate change. Uh, as Pakistan ranks eight most vulnerable countries due to climate change. So according to a report by International Medical Corps, uh, Medical Corps uh, recent moon floods, floods have caused more than 1,700 deaths. More than 2 million homes have been damaged. Uh, more than 7 million people have been displayed and around 6,000 people are living in temporary relief camps. So overall, our goal of, pro our go goal of our project was to build resilience of local communities to these env environmental threats using right technology-based interventions. So uh, auto automated mapping of glacial lakes requires a large training data set, which should, which should contain sufficient example of different types of lakes with different shapes, size, and geodometric signature to be sufficient for training a deep learning model. Also an updated database of potentially generic JS will help us to never narrow down our approach to monitor, to continuously monitor specific locations that are marked potentially dangerous. So our objectives in this project were to develop a labeled data set of glacial lakes, which is currently lacking. Also, the objective was to 
uh, introduce a benchmark data set for uh, development of different remote sensing methodologies for automated mapping of glacial lakes. Secondly, our objective was to design a deep learning framework for detect detection of glacial lakes, also develop an updated inventory of potentially dangerous lakes for Northern Pakistan. So the first step in our methodology was to locate glacial lakes. So we used a glacial lake inventory of high mountain Asia region that, is, that has been developed in uh, 2018. Um, and they were the authors were using lands and imagery. The image basically shows um, and the red color basically shows the distribution of glacial lakes in high mountain Asia region. So the author, authors were using NDWI and manu manual vectorization approaches to extract boundaries of glacial lakes. They were able to delineate 30, more than 30,000 glacial lakes and they covered approximately 20, 80 kilometers square of area. So we, we use this inventory as a reference to locate glacial lakes and download satellite imagery over particular areas. So sec secondly, we developed our data set by downloading Sentinel-2 true color high resolution images from Sentinel Hub's EO browser. It is, uh, it is a cloud platform for visualizing and downloading pre-processed pre satellite data. We were using uh, L2A product because uh, its atmospheric correction is also done and it is a bottom of atmosphere product extracted from L1C product. We were, we were downloading imagery uh, mostly in the year 2020 and 2021, mostly in the month of September because cloud free data is available in this month. We were able to extract 400 two color scenes. Uh, then we created 1200 uh, crops of 320 by 320 uh, to train and test our model. So the first row basically shows uh, four, a set of four true color, true color images from our training, training data set. Uh, it shows the variation of radiomatic signature in different images. It also highlights the complexity of a, a lake classification problem and also the training diversity in our training data set. Uh, second row basically shows uh, two examples uh, from our training data set along with their binary ground truth masks. Our data set is publicly available and can be accessed through this link or you can just type uh, glacial lake det det detection data set in the search bar of IEEE data port. So you will be able to locate and download this data set. Uh, for deep learning based glacial lakes, lakes classification, we were using an encoder decoder based convolution neural network. Uh, it is termed as UNET. It, is, it was originally proposed for biomedical image segmentation problems. So we, we use this for glacial lake classification. It consists of two parts, encoder and decoder. Encoder basically extracts the complex lower level feature maps, whereas decoder map the high level features to outputs by combining information from the encoder part through several skip connections. We were using efficient net B0 as encoder backbone and image net pre-trained weights. So uh, the reason for using efficient net B0 was because uh, we were able to train our networks faster and also the compulsive scaling methods introduced in this backbone allow us to extract features more efficiently. So we used 1000 images for training and 200 images for validation and testing purposes. As we can see in the first row, our model was able to accurately, accurately classify all small and large lakes as labeled in the ground truth masks. In the second row, our model was able to classify all lakes except one that is wrongly classified as background class. So in our computation, it is considered as a classification error. In the third row, the model detected an additional small portion of the lake that was originally not labeled in the ground truth masks. So we are, we are trying to improve our labels and training our models again uh, to, to, to remove this classification and labeling error. So this uh, table basically shows the semantic segmentation result of proposed unis bearing model trained with different loss function. We were using the intersection over union score as evaluation metric. It is a, uh, it is a common metric used for semantic segmentation problems. So by training unit with just trust and property loss function, we were able to uh, achieve an intersection over union score of 78.77% only for the lake class. So I'm letting this point because this is not mean IUU, it's just the IUU for lake class. Uh, by training by training unit with four loss function, we were able to achieve an intersection over union value of 79.90%, which, uh, which is currently the state of the art for this data set. By training our model with a combination of four focal and record loss function, we were able to get an IUU score of 70.92%. So uh, this is basically a case study of 2019 event caused by a glacial lake found on the Rohili Dogpal Glacier that I uh, mentioned in the first slide. 
So top row basically shows the input image to the classifier and the bottom row shows the classified output of a deep learning uh, or proposed deep learning classifier. So as we can see that the lake birth was observed on June 18, 2019. So our model was able to accurately classify uh, it as a glacial lake, despite the fact that it was covered with uh, ice and debris. In the, in the second column, we can see that uh, the, the lake appear as a tiny water body or as a tiny speck and our model was, it was, it was basically difficult to visualize at this point, but our model was able to classify it as a small water body or small glacial lake. In the third and fourth columns, we can see that the lake size significantly increased. This lake caused a glow event on July 7, and we were able to get a cloud-free imagery of July 8. So uh, we can see that uh, there is no lake. Uh, lake caused a glow event, and all the water has been drained. So this is the case study of 2020 glow event. Um, it, it, it was again the same glacier, and another glacial lake was formed on this. Uh, formed on this, as we can see that. Uh, this year, the lake birth was uh, uh, observed a little bit early on May 28. Lake appeared as a tiny water body, and our classifier was able to classify it as a glacial lake. In the second and third columns, we can see that the lake size gradually increased, and our classifier was also able to uh, classify the lake and observe its uh, observe the increase in its area. Uh, on, on observing it on consecutive passes, we were we were able to see an, an abrupt increase in the in the in the lake area. And finally, this this lake caused a glow event on July 13. And uh, as we can see, the uh, the acquisition of July 2022, so a lake caused a glow event, and there was no there was no existing lake, and all the water was drained. So uh, we were able to develop a labeled data set of glacial lakes. Uh, comprising as a true color imagery from Sentinel-2 mission. So uh, also we were able to propose a uh, encoded decoders based CNN that, were, that was able to classify glacial lakes with an IUU score of 79.9%. So currently we are working towards development of an updated inventory of glacial lakes for Northern Pakistan. Also the specific locations that are potentially marked as dangerous so we can continuously monitor them in the near future. Also we want to scale our work to, the, to cover the entire HKH region. And, and develop a database of potentially dangerous lakes. So thank you everyone for listening and uh, I'm open to any questions from your side. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, to give us this overview. Uh, it is uh, short and compact. Thanks a lot for this. I think it shows really exactly what we need and what we are looking forward. Uh, we would like to receive more of these uh, very engage, let me say, smaller project and ideas uh, how to uh, yeah, deal scientifically with certain issues. In this case, it's, it's great to have an indicator for, for glacial lakes. Thanks a lot. Are there some questions from the audience? Probably just shortly, if there are some. Um, if you like, then you can uh, raise your hand if you like, or you just speak up shortly. There are uh, no questions in the chat box. So okay. I think yeah yes okay then it's fine but then we just try again with nida if she can speak up now uh, hi everyone i am nida kuyo uh, i am working as a project manager uh, project by NetGeo and Microsoft. Uh, I am also working as a research analyst with more sensing and GIS. Um, that is it for my time. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'm very happy that it was working now. Great, Nida. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and congratulations again to the whole team uh, for this work and for, for the submission of the work. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. I will contact you later on for the small um, yeah, let me say small report for the magazine. So we will interact uh, on it later on then. I will just contact you via email. Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, just we I just hand now over to Ferruz uh, because we have still something to celebrate now. Thank you, Irena. So now it's the turn of the Earth at Risk Image Contest. So it's organized in conjunction with the mini projects for sustainable development goals competition that you just saw right now with the React TC. 
And uh, the image contest aims to raise awareness of nature and climate crisis and to demonstrate the power of Earth observation data in helping us better understand the environmental issues on the Earth. So we had this year around uh, 35 submissions from different parts of the world, as you can see here. And each submission was also accompanied with the uh, description, the story behind the image. And you can see the full album of all the submitted images here if you scan this QR code. And here is an overview of all images. So we were really outstanding, but the quality, the diversity of the submitted images, uh, highlighting different environmental issues in the first version of this contest. So I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who participated in this year's competition. And thank you so much for it. It was really great to, to, uh, to witness each of your work. So this year's uh, contest uh, has been evaluated by the React Technical Committee team. So Irena Hanse, Carlos Lopez Martinez, Avik Patacharya, and I want to thank them all for uh, their uh, uh, for their um, commitment to this uh, competition. So it was a really tough decision for them since all images were very interesting, and we are pleased to announce uh, the winners of this year's version. So the, the third place uh, of the image uh, contest Earth at Risk is awarded to Swita Katwala from the Vadodara Urban Development Authority in India. So congratulations, Swita. So her image uh, was about uh, forest fragmentation. And I will give her the floor now to talk a little bit about her image and tell us the story behind it. Hi, Swita. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, the floor thank is you, Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And I would like to thank uh, IEEE for, uh, first of all, giving me the third place. And uh, before explaining my image and my analysis, I would like to explain what forest fragmentation is. So uh, forest fragmentation is basically a phenomenon in which large parts of continuous forest are broken down and they are broken down into small patches and used uh, for uh, various human activities like creating road networks or creating agriculture land or other ar uh, archaeological development. So the image that we've submitted is uh, of uh, the state of Para, which is located in Brazil. It is the southwestern part of Para. Uh, so we've taken Landsat uh, 5, Landsat 4, and Landsat 9 images, and basically a 30-decade analysis was done. And uh, based on this analysis, it was shown that up till now, uh, Para lost for almost 7.2 million hectares of forest cover. And uh, that was up till from 2000 to 2019. And in 2020, it has shown a 12-year uh, hike in the deforestation. So, uh, which is the highest and highest in now. So it has uh, hampered the environmental enforcement and it results, and due to this forest fragmentation, it has resulted in higher temperatures in that area and extreme weather conditions. So forest fragmentation clearly shows that Earth is at risk. Uh, thank you, that was my image. Thank you so much, Sita, that was amazing. So for everyone, if you have some questions, please don't hesitate to ask Swita. So she's here. You can unmute yourself and ask her directly or use the chat box. So I think there are no questions. So congratulations again, Swita. Yeah, you will be contacted soon about your honorium and certificate. Thank you. So the next award, so it's the second place. Uh, it's presented to Lorenzo Amirati from University of Naples, Federico II in Italy. Congratulations first, Lorenzo. And his image is about land cover affected by flood and he's here and he's gonna talk about his image. Yeah, the floor is yours, Lorenzo. Hi everyone, and uh, I'm Lorenzo, of course, and uh, I'm from Naples, uh, Italy. 
and uh, I had a PhD at the University of Naples, Federico II. And uh, I'm so glad to receive this uh, award. And uh, I would uh, like uh, thanks the um, organizer and the jury too. And uh, I try to uh, explain my uh, image very shortly. And um, a little introduction uh, to the area. Um, we are in uh, Brumadinho mining area located in Brazil. And this area is uh, also known for the catastrophic event occurred in uh, January in uh, 2019 when the telling them I, uh, in the center of the media, I, I don't know, I have the cursor or mouse, no. It's possible. Oh, don't worry. In the center, uh, it's possible to know the, in the center of the media. In uh, January, uh, this telling them uh, collapsed and uh, caused an uh, orange flood, contaminated orange flood. Important to note uh, the uh, the Telling Dam was composed principally uh, with a uh, hematite composition. And uh, I started from a Sentinel-2 image derived from uh, HESA. And uh, I used a uh, you know, software uh, Snap derived also from HESA. And uh, in particular, uh, I used uh, the spectral mixing tool in Snap. Uh, I sampled the uh, spectral signature from Sentinel-2 image, pre-event image, and uh, I used this information, in particular the information related to the uh, mining area and to the vegetation and water, and I used this information uh, in the uh, iMixing uh, spectral tool. And the output was uh, the aware of free image, that contain the value of the uh, hand member used related to the mining, uh, to the uh, vegetation and the water. And uh, finally, I mix this free image and obtain a uh, you know, RGB image. And uh, this, uh, this image uh, we can uh, see. And uh, it's uh, possible to note uh, how the uh, entire shape of the flow uh, is mapped to this method and uh, how uh, this method and uh, also the uh, open pit uh, the mining area both in the north and west part of the image and how this method uh, can be, uh, is very useful to uh, take a preliminary analysis about this uh, event and uh, it's possible to study uh, the uh, affect the area by the contaminated flood. And uh, uh, I, uh, I had the publication about this uh, study and uh, I have I, I able to clarify uh, some doubts and uh, any question. And I don't know if I can share my publication in the chat, uh, if it's possible, uh, sharing yeah. and... Uh, I finish uh, very quickly and uh, thanks uh, so much uh, to everyone. Thank you so much, Lorenzo. It was great. Yeah, congratulations again. And if someone thanks. has a question, please don't hesitate to ask Lorenzo directly. So, and then the first place of the Earth at Risk Image Contest is presented to Precious Nkwaji Tsui from the Federal University of Akure in Nigeria. Congratulations, Precious. And her image uh, was about land use, land cover of Okumu Forest Reserve. So I think she's here. So hello, Precious. Yeah. Sorry, um, I'm coming. Okay. Uh, good day, everyone. I'm sorry for. I'm sorry for the late response. I'm actually having network issues over here. Yeah. So please can you hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. So the floor is yours. We are looking forward to hear the story behind your image. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, all right. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, so um, this is actually, um, the work I did was showing the rate of deforestation over a particular forest reserve. It's, it's actually a place for, so a reserve is actually set for keeping a particular species, like keeping a species, some animals and some, some places. So, but this particular forest reserve is not just only a reserve, it also has an area, a region for plants, like majorly plantations, like, which is palm oil, because it's actually it's known for producing palm oil also. But over the years, there has been this um, encroachment and deforestation and uprooting of these trees. So this work was actually focused on to see the extent of how far this deforestation has gone over the years, which has led to extinctions of some species, which are trying to be conserved in this reserve. So, but looking at the, so this, that was what prompted me engaging in this activity or in this work to check out, okay, how far this deforestation has gone over this long time. And if you look far back, so the, my, it was majorly two years I considered that was, I could have used more years, but due to lack of it's some issues with data. So I majorly looked at 2002 to 2002, eh, 2021. And the rate was, in short, it was more than 50% reduction that I could see over this particular place. And presently now, it's almost like a bell land, the place, it's almost like a bell land. You, you could barely see animals or go there to say, okay, you want to go and sightsee. It's it just, it's a very scanty portion that is left now for the first. So this all just prompted the idea. So using, with the use of GIS, I was able to analyze, to look at, okay, the extent at which this has gone. And that was what prompted this project. Thank you so much, Precious. That was outstanding. Yeah, congratulations again. And if someone has any questions, so please ask them. Thank you. So I don't see any questions. Yeah, congratulations again, Precious. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And not, um, last but not least, so we have also a People's Choice Award, which is presented to Indrani uh, Misra from the Space Applications Center in the Indian Space Research Organization in India. So congratulations, Indranil. So uh, this award was actually selected by the audience votes and uh, his image is about a change detection map over Gangotri Glacier. So hi, Indranil. So he's here, but I think he has a network problem, problem. So we will try if we can hear him now. So the floor is yours, Indranil. Hello, Indranil. Yeah, I think he has some problem with the internet connection. So, so if you want to know more about his image, so uh, you can visit the GRSS website there. We have a page about all the images and the stories behind them. So please check them out later. So I want to congratulate everyone again. And yeah, Irena, maybe you want to say something? Yeah, thanks. Thanks again. I, I think all I mean, all the two competition have been really, let me say, uh, a very good success in terms of uh, that we could see so many proposals and ideas. And again, as, as Ferus was saying, so I'm very, very happy that so many people were applying for it. It is always a pity that we have at the end only three winners, right? <laughs> because uh, as Ferus was already saying, so much more have been deserved uh, already this certificate. It was really a very difficult decision as well uh, for, let me say, uh, for, for the mini project as well as also for the photo contest. Again, thank you very much. And we hope to see you again uh, for the next contest. You can try it again. And probably, I don't know, you can win again something that is uh, of outstanding. Thanks uh, again and uh, all the best for all of you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Irina, uh, can we have a, a group photo? Uh, for oh, all, yes, yeah, all if you like. Oh, that's, that's a good idea. An organizing Great. committee. 
Uh, yes. 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 Okay. yes. Very good. So if mm -hmm. everybody could share their their screen, a very good uh, idea. Thanks. Can you see this? That everybody's opening the screen. Is it? Um, should I make a picture, or do you, or somebody else likes to do the picture? Uh, yeah, I think it's Sham can do that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I can do. Uh, but everyone can do this. Yes, uh, everybody can do. So time. okay. Uh, maybe Farouz, if you do it, you can put yeah, it up here. It. Yeah, please. Thank you. So one, two, three. Please smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Great idea. So we, so Ferus, we could send this picture then if, I mean, if, if you haven't got it, so we can at least send it to the winning team uh, so that, that everybody has a send from the winning part. Yeah, perfect. Okay, okay. yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot again to everybody and uh, enjoy it. And as I was saying, you're welcome to apply again for the next round next year. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Congratulations. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.